I could show a loss, but I could take my book, my, my books to a bank and they can really see what I was making because they know I took a loss because I just made this capital investment into the business and all this type of stuff. It's just the way that's all broken down. We don't know that. All we doing is running our business. We don't know, understand all this accounting jimbo jabo and all this type of stuff going on, but somebody need to understand it. And somebody on your team needs to. And so as your business grows, and especially for e-commerce, anybody in the e-commerce world, especially if you're dealing with lots of transactions, dealing with returns, maybe you're dealing with sales tax in different states and things like that, you need somebody that knows what they're doing. So I highly suggest that you vet whoever is on your team because the lesson I learned with my first accountant, it is all on you. Okay, you're signing that final tax return talking about this is correct and everything like that. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to The 9% Show. I am your host, Stephen Burton. And here at The 9%, y'all know we keep everything 100. If I haven't done it, not doing it, or not about to do it, it will not come out my mouth. So um, first of all, please like and subscribe to this uh, video. If you like the content we're putting out, please like the video. It goes a long way in helping other people find the video and all that good stuff. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, and also like we always do around this time here at the 9%, we take our toast to the 9%ers out there or those that wish to be into the 9% club. You will get there, trust me. Cheers to everyone out there. Um, so yeah, today's episode, we gonna talk about the importance of financial records and bookkeeping. Oh, don't that sound like a sexy title? That sound, that sound like, oh my goodness, you couldn't wait to hear about this episode, right? That's how people think about books. They think it's boring. There's it's nothing exciting about that. And you might be like, why am I making this an episode? Because it's so important, okay? It's one of the most foundational things you can have in business. And if your books and your records aren't right, you are just um, slowly falling off the cliff and you just don't know it. Or you're slowly messing up opportunities, future opportunities, and you just don't know it. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about my story about how I've come to the point right now where my books are excellent and I have a bookkeeper and all this type of stuff going on versus kind of what happened when I first started the business, first started Perfect Tux. Um, and I'm gonna just, you know, kind of talk about four different points of, of why, you know, having great records and uh, bookkeeping is so important. So that's what we're gonna talk about this episode. Um, hope y'all enjoy it. And without further ado, we gonna get started on this thing. We gonna talk about number one. So the number one thing I wanna talk about um, is your, your financial records and bookkeeping will show proof of profit for loans and um, investors. So one of the biggest things in business, it's always comes down to money. Like. How do I get the money to start my business? How do I get my money money to rate uh, scale my business? How do I get the money to survive a slow period or, or buy some inventory or whatever the case may be? Or some of y'all might have aspirations to you know getting investors and getting investors on board or angel investors or venture capital, whatever the case may be. You're one of the things that banks, investors. Anybody that wants to know anything about your business to make a, any type of decision, they're going to ask you for your tax returns, for your balance sheet, for your profit and loss statement. These are some common things they're going to ask for you first. I mentioned in my uh, previous episode about how I got a, a business loan through Chase uh, that I'll link right here. But one of the first things the banker said when I told him I was ready to apply for a line of credit was send me your tax return. Before application, before anything else, he wanted to look at my tax return just to see if it's even worth the conversation. Is it even worth going past these things? And if I didn't show a profit on my books at the end of the day, what I'm reporting to the government, a profit, I would have got denied for that loan because based on that profit is how they tell that you can pay back what you're asking for. If you're one of those people that either A, don't keep any type of records, um, how are you gonna prove anything to anybody? Like that's, that's, that's a simple one. And then B, you might be part of that, that group that are just like, um, I'm gonna take cash, I'm only gonna take uh, Venmo, Zelle me, because 
I don't want to pay no taxes. I don't want to pay uh, merchant fees from credit cards. They charge me 2.9%, uh, whatever the case may be. If you're one of those people, or you want to lessen your tax burden. So you're saying you take all cash and you're only reporting, you made 50,000, but you're only reporting you made 20,000. Guess what they're going to take when you go to a bank and go to where? Are they going to take your word, even your profit and loss statement that you made 50,000? No, they're going to look at your tax return, what you're telling the government you made 20,000, because that is the true factual uh, things. Your profit and loss, your balance sheet can kind of be played with, or it could be incorrect, you know, but what you report to the government is tends to be correct. I mean, put it this way. That's, that's where everybody can find the, the truth in is what, what you report to the government. So if you're thinking about, uh, you know, getting a loan through a bank, if you're thinking about even investors, investors, especially if your business has started and you have had traction, Part of the 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 um, what the investor is going to ask for is your is your numbers. They want to see okay, well, how many sales have you had? How many uh, what's your what's your balance sheet look like? Like, wh what's the strength of your business? So it, it's kind of a catch twenty two, you know, when when dealing with investors. Like when it's just an idea, all you're dealing with is projections, and you're like, you know, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do that. And you just got this curve going straight up, straight from the bottom left, straight to the right, upper right. Um, but once you start a business. It's almost like you get the short end of the stick because now they have something to base it on. And you want them to base your that base your business on accurate numbers. So that that is the one of the main reasons why it's important to have your your records straight. It's important to have your bookkeeping straight. Um do yourself a favor, even if you're at a small scale of your business and it's even side hustle, get QuickBooks, QuickBooks, QuickBooks online. It's a simple, simple thing. A lot of it's like point and click and really has some basic things to, you know, to, to help get you started, at least have things structured in the right way. Now, you can, with a lesson I'm going to tell you later in this episode, you can, if you get to a certain level in your business, it might not be the best choice for you to keep doing that yourself. But uh, we're, we're going to talk about that a little later. But from a, from a standpoint of just showing somebody the, the status of your business, you know, showing your proof of profit, um, we're dealing with loans, no matter what type of loan it is, um, dealing with investors, it's important to have that. They're going to ask that. And the last thing you want to do is be like, huh, what? Huh? I don't know. Like, you're going to be out the door as quick as they can say uh, denied. Okay. Um, number two. Number two, we're going to think we're going to talk about is uh which was i went through that this is in 2020 the 2020 year who remembers the 2020 year dum, dum, dum. but uh government support and the lessons from COVID 19. now i was i i felt well one it was a you know COVID, COVID was a crazy time to be a business owner it was a crazy time especially for my business I'm in the formal wear business. We depend on events happening in America. And I never thought how I would sell formal wear in a world where not one event was going on anywhere. Like, how do you do it? So it was a tough time. But with all this tough times, who's going to step up to help the small businessman, even the big businessman? All everybody was looking. Everybody had their hand out at that time. It was no it was no such thing as a government handout at that time. Everybody had their hand out. Nobody was hating on that time. But anyways, when it was everybody stuff was hitting the fan, what was the only system that could come save the day? The government. And boy, were they making it rain like they was at the strip club. They was throwing out the PPPs and the, and the SBAs and the EIDLs. And they were just throwing all this money. And they were saying, keep the employees. They was giving up freaking uh, uh, unemployment. Like the money was flowing down. But we're going to be talking about from a business standpoint. I felt bad that so many businesses was out there and they did not exist to the government. They had no records. Or like your PPPs and your, your, your the EIDLs, the uh, economic injury disaster law. I forget the what it was at this time. I was I was an expert at that time, but um, it was all off your payroll, all off your your uh some of the loans they was giving you was based on how much money you your business was generating. Like they was trying to make you whole or make you. They was trying to have uh, equations where like okay we're trying to get you through uh six months of cash flow or eight months of cash flow. That was how they was doing these calculations. And if you didn't have any any records, any books, any tax returns, if the government did not know you existed. 
you got zero support, nothing. So if COVID-19 taught us anything, it should have taught you the importance of records and bookkeeping. It was so important. Um, another reason why I was also, I didn't lie on none of my stuff because all this stuff is trackable. Okay, people are still going to jail right now out them PPPs and everything like that because you couldn't just put your have 20 employees and you was just go get this money and thought the government was gonna forget about it. No, the reason why there's records and bookkeeping and all this stuff, type of stuff with financial records is because you pay taxes on those 20 employees. You report, you get a you get a quarterly statement on your employees every quarter from your payroll system. There's things that actually have to happen. Okay, so if you're on the flip side of it, if you was lying and you got caught up, it was easy to figure it out. And then on the other side of that, if you weren't doing this stuff, um, you just was was lost. Or if your if your if your books wasn't correct, you also had a chance of like, oh, are you lying to the government? Can you put yourself uh, maybe you had a good faith basis for the numbers you were submitting, but maybe they was in inaccurate. And so when they're doing an audit on you, or you get you know somebody come down knocking on your door. Years later, you can't prove what you had on your application. So COVID-19 taught us the importance of having your, your numbers correct. If there was ever a situation like hopefully I ain't got no wood nowhere. I ain't got no wood. But, um, you know, hopefully a situation like that was once in a lifetime, a pandemic like that. And we'll, we'll never have to deal with that again, at least us here on Earth right now. Um, but who knows? You never know when stuff hits the fan. Like even something as small as um, when there's a, a, a state of emergency, maybe you flood a hurricane or earthquake or whatever happened, the government, they come, they come for the rescue and they say, hey, but do you think they just go give it to you? Like you have to prove that you exist. It's so important for government support to be ready, have your numbers correct, report your stuff to the government, do your taxes, file your taxes, it is more important than you think, okay? So if anything COVID-19 taught us, it was be prepared with your financial records and your bookkeeping, okay? Very important stuff. Um, we gonna talk about number three. Ooh, all right, number three we are gonna be talking about is um, you wanna be able to make informed business decisions. I always talk about on this show, you shouldn't do nothing blindfolded. Okay, you shouldn't be running no business. You be running. You shouldn't be running no marketing campaigns. There's no, no aspect in your business that you should make a decision just off the top of your head. You should have some data to help form that decision. And what is your financial records? That was a data. That's data that you can use to see what's going on in your business to make make decisions about your business. What's working? What's not working? Um, I have a bookkeeper that I can ask, you know, when I was, you know, real stories, when I, whatever I'm thinking about, maybe hiring somebody, I want to hire somebody new. I'm like, okay, I need, can you project to me this, this future employee is going to cost this much. Uh, I hope that we're going to have an increase in revenue, maybe, you know, 8% year over year, blah, 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 blah. Based on my previous history of, uh, of uh, expenses, project that out to me. And I'm, when he projected out to me and I'm, I'm in the positive, I'm, okay, well, this could work. This could work. And granted, you don't know what the future may hold. Anything is possible, but you're able to, I'm able to make a the business decision based on not just hopes and dreams, but based on actual numbers, based on what's going on. If you have incorrect numbers, you make incorrect decisions. Like you're, you, you know, you can't make, it's like, the, it's like the government, you know, or the president, uh, the, what happened to Iraq? He had bad information with the, with the, with the weapons of mass destruction. You can only you can only go off of the information you have to make decisions. It sucked that that was you know I, I think history has found out that that was a wrong decision based on wrong information. But it's the same thing in business. The reason I'm trying to put this analogy together is because you don't want to make decisions based on wrong information. Okay, so um, there's so many ways you know I, I overlap my my uh my data, my, my records. I look at my, 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 my e-commerce platform, which is Shopify. They have, they have reports on there. They have sales data. I look at my QuickBooks and see actual, you know, the actual numbers, like the end of the day. Um, I look at my Google analytics. They, they actually have uh, sales data on there. That's only for the website, things like that. Yeah, I can look at my sales data. There's so many data points that I could grasp and take from to make proper decisions. And that's what I do. And, um, 
based on these decisions, hopefully, uh, based on this, um, these, uh, th these resources you have, hopefully you make great decisions, but it is why you need accurate and to have proper financial records. Okay. It is very important. Like I keep on saying, all right, let's talk about this fourth thing we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about a bookkeeper versus accountant. Okay. And why you need both. Okay. And what is the difference? I learned this lesson the hard way. Okay. I didn't know there was a difference between a bookkeeper and accountant. I thought an accountant did it all. Okay. You, you, are a business accountant here. Here's my stuff, you know, do it. Little did I know an accountant is just kind of like for tax preparation for, you know, financial, uh, analyze financial data, you know, maybe could help you project and things like that. But they are not bookkeepers. They do not look at your day to day numbers and things like that. So I learned this lesson the hard way. When I first started the business, I got an accountant uh, that I met. Matter of fact, I, I got this accountant from a, a, a course I was I was I was there. I took this workshop on QuickBooks and the accountant that was teaching the class. I went to her and said, hey, maybe you should be my accountant. You're teaching a class. You got to know what you're doing. Mm hmm. That's the first lesson. Get referrals, y'all. Get referrals. But um, so I was doing my own QuickBooks for my first like two years in business. And for those that don't know QuickBooks, I mean, it's kind of like you're just point and clicking. I'm not an accountant. Heck, I'm not even great at math. I was never great at math. I didn't really understand why something was happening. It was like, okay, this expense, I'm going to classify it as this. This income classified as that. Okay, next to the next, next to the next. I'm just clicking, clicking and clicking and clicking. I give my, you know, it's end of year way to do taxes, my end of year stuff. I just give my my accountant access to my bookkeeper. I, I mean, access to my QuickBooks. I'm assuming she's actually looking at, w at what she's type or what she's submitting or gonna say, hey, Steve, something about this doesn't look right. No, what does she do? She just submit my stuff on to the government. Just submits it on, submits it on. I'm like, okay, we good, whatever. I, I, that doesn't tell me anything. Um, I find out that, um, I'm trying to think, how did I find out? Um, I think I was starting to have, my numbers just wasn't looking correct. Like I wasn't, the, and it's a little challenging because sometimes your, 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 your financial records or your p l statements on like the profits you're making sometimes doesn't really match your checking account and vice versa. It might, you might be making a bunch of money and not have that much in your account. And you might be, have a lot in your account and you, you losing money. You're like, hold on. It's, it's not always lined up mainly because obviously the flow of business, you maybe bought some inventory you know, you, which you took your money from and then, you know, your, your inventory is a value thing and the way, you know, it's a big calculation. Again, I'm not an accountant. That's why I have people do it. But there was things I was seeing that just wasn't adding up. And then around this time, I was asking questions like my stuff wasn't looking right. And the accountant really just had nothing to say. Like, oh, I submitted what you gave me. Like really wasn't give me nothing. Uh, matter of fact, no, I remember what it was. SCORE, I talked about a lot on um, previous episodes. SCORE uh, is a great organization, SCORE.org. You can find retired uh, business people that, that they're just there to give you free support, like literally. And I had a guy come to my office and he was a, um, he had a financial background and he was looking at my numbers and stuff. And he was just like, this, you know, something ain't looking right. This stuff ain't looking right. I'm like, oh, really? I, I don't know. So that just started the thing. And fast forward a little bit, uh, um, a mentor of mine, an investor friend of mine, he referred me to his bookkeeper. So again, referrals. This bookkeeper of mine, oh, Godson, oh my goodness. When I say she came in, I mean, I might've got in the middle of the, the current year at the time. She said, you know, I'm gonna look at, you know, the beginning of the year up to now and just fix what's going on. She fixed all my stuff and she was like, Steve, you know, this was just wrong. I found like extra income here, whoop de whoop. I think it's best I look at last year, in the year after that. Like all this stuff, I'm paying all this money extra, I'm paying for these services, this ain't free, she ain't doing it for the kindness of her heart. I'm paying her for this. So I'm getting screwed by my accountant letting all this happen for a couple years. But my bookkeeper were like, I kid you not, was they will end up finding like $20,000 of unreported income. Like 
Like, if the government did an audit on me, they would think I'm trying to hustle somebody. I'm like, I ain't got the 20. I ain't got it. But, like, it wasn't on paper. It wasn't right. And you was able to track it down to where it was and where it was misclassified. And I think one of the biggest things, like, it might have been under a reef, under refunds, and it was really income. It, it was just It was just crazy. But the, that's where I learned my valuable lesson that a bookkeeper handles the day-to-day -day financials. Every transaction, every expense, they're, they're the ones logging and make sure it's correct. At that point, at the end of your year, your bookkeeper presents your nicely uh, 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 already put together financials and gives it to the accountant and the tax preparer and they click, 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 click and submit your stuff. Why do they get paid so much to do that? I don't know. I guess that's how it's always been. I really don't know, tell you the truth. My bookkeeper, she's worth every single, every single penny I pay her, she is worth it. My accountant, on the other hand, I mean, you know, he, he's great too, but I switched accountants several times, I ain't gonna lie to you, because I'm just like, what are y'all technically doing? I mean, my bookkeeper is just serving the whole plate here. But um, it's important to have a good bookkeeper. Like my bookkeeper, I can I can go to for projections. I can go to for tax questions. She asks, you know, she's like, I'm not a, you know, I don't have a woo -woo -woo certification for this, but I know enough and blah, blah, blah. Here's my, you know, my advice. Um, I could talk to her about anything going on in the business. Um, when we built the store, it was the first time that the business took an L for the year. Like, and like, I was fully on my Donald Trump stuff. Like, I ain't make no money. I can't tax me or my money's locked up over here and using that like to my profit and loss. And like my, you know, uh, it's so confusing. Like I could show a loss, but I could take my book, my, my books to a bank and they can really see what I was making because they know I took a loss because I just made this capital investment into the business and all this type of stuff. It's just the way that's all broken down, we don't know that. All we doing is running our business. We don't know, understand all this accounting jimbo jabo and all this type of stuff going on, but somebody need to understand it and somebody on your team needs to. And so as your business grows and especially for e-commerce, anybody in the e-commerce world, and especially if you're dealing with lots of transactions, dealing with returns, maybe you're dealing with sales tax in different states and things like that, you need somebody that knows what they're doing. So I highly suggest that you vet whoever is on your team because the lesson I learned with my first accountant, it is all on you, okay? You're signing that final tax return talking about this is correct and everything like that. So it's all on you. You need to do your due diligence, make sure they know what they're doing. Um, hopefully get somebody that's referred to you. Um, I highly suggest having a bookkeeper. Even if you don't have a accountant and you go to H&R Block or whatever the case may be, have a bookkeeper. I'm telling you, they are worth everything they need to be paid. Like they, they are worth it. I will not, if you're, if you're like, oh, okay, is it worth it? Trust me, because you don't want to find out if your business gets successful enough. You don't want to find out what will happen if your books and your numbers is wrong and you're giving wrong information to the government. Trust me, Mr. IRS will be on your door like, hey, what's up with that 20,000 you thought you was hiding? What 20,000? I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, that's what we're talking about. That's all my points for today. Uh, please get your books right. It is so important. We gotta have that right as business people. It, I, I can't stress it any more than that. So, um. If you felt felt this video was helpful, please like the video, please like, subscribe to our channel, share this content, get it out there, get it to the masses. We really appreciate it. Until next time, I will see you on the 9%. Peace.